When someone is scared, they try to ignore that fear. However, Junji Ito is a mangaka who has embraced that fear and turned it into a passion that has made him one of the best horror manga creators of all time. Junji Ito was born on July 31st, 1963 in Sakashita, Japan. Horror was always a part of his life as he began reading scary manga at an extremely young age. His two older sisters would read works by Kazuo Umezu and Shinichi Koga in magazines, which he consequently would begin to read as well. His first manga that he read was Mummy Teacher by Kazuo Umezu, who is one of his biggest inspirations to date. Ito started drawing when he was about 4 or 5 and would draw on the back of advertisements and would attempt to frame them like the manga he had read. He states that it was just for fun at the time. However, manga wasn't the only thing that brought fear into Ito's life at a young age. He states that horror manga mainly interested him rather than scared him. He grew up in a small city in the countryside and his bathroom was located at the end of an underground tunnel where spider crickets would often reside as there was no flooring. He would also play hide and seek around old hospital buildings that he thought were scary. These experiences would later be inspirations for work in his career. Ito says he's been around horror manga as long as he can remember, and just like a duckling thinks the first person it sees is its mother, horror manga was like a parent, as strange as that may sound. He says, quote, I really felt close to it, sort of like a kinship, so I guess the draw of it was a part of me. It's difficult to explain. Ito's first manga was about a protagonist with an eye in the middle of his hand that would attack him. He states it was heavily influenced by Kappa no Sanpai. Growing up, he would also be inspired by classic horror films like Dracula, Frankenstein, and Susperia as well. Ito continued to draw throughout his entire life. He graduated from a vocational school with a degree in dental technology and became a dental technician in 1984 for almost six years. His experience proved useful as the anatomy classes he had to take provided insight he used within his work. He claims aside from that, being a dental technician hasn't really influenced his work all that much, but it did teach him how to modify his tools as he typically makes changes to his pens to better fit his grip. About three years into his job, Ito started seriously pursuing his career as a mangaka, but found it extremely difficult to manage the two jobs. He states that as a dental technician, the job can be pretty demanding with very long hours. Along with drawing manga, he felt like he couldn't keep up. Ito made the decision to pursue manga as he states, You only live once after all, so I decided to go all in on manga. The decision to pursue manga full-time paid off in 1987 as Ito submitted a short story to Monthly Halloween, a monthly manga magazine that ran until 1995. His story won an honorable mention for the Kazuo Umezu Prize, which was judged by one of his biggest inspirations, Umezu himself. The story ran for 13 years and would later be serialized in Tomie. One of Ito's most famous works, Tomie, was inspired by the death of one of his classmates when he was younger. Ito cites that it felt strange that a boy he knew suddenly disappeared from the world, and he kept expecting the boy to show up again. From this blossomed the idea of a girl that was supposed to have died, but shows up as if nothing had happened. Some of Ito's biggest influences on his work are Kazuo Umezu, Hideshi Ino, Shinichi Koga, Yatsutaka Sutsui, Edogawa Rampo, and H.P. Lovecraft. He also takes inspiration from Salvador Dali and has stated that he admires Guillermo del Toro's work who has openly praised Ito as the undisputed master of horror in Japan. Although Ito is inspired by many of his peers, he has worked diligently on creating his own style. His work consists of many subgenres of horror, mainly body and cosmic horror, as Ito has stated that he enjoys science fiction very much. When asked about why these themes are so prevalent, he says, I've always loved sci-fi and have always been drawn to situations that would be impossible in real life. It's fun to be in a different world than our own. H.P. Lovecraft has had an influence on my sci-fi, space horror stories. He states, quote, Actually, when I was a high schooler, I was in a remote village in Nagano Prefecture looking up at the starry sky when I felt afraid that I was going to be swallowed up by the night sky. Experiences like that have had an influence on my work. As far as body horror, I'm curious about the human body, so I think I've created more and more body horror stories over time. I also think the human body which contains the complex human heart, not the anatomical heart, but the emotional heart, is scary. I don't have fear of an animal's body. I don't think I've studied existential fears enough to answer, but when I was young, I was thinking about myself and became afraid. I'm not sure if it's because of that, but I'm not very good at watching myself in media and I hate listening to my own voice. I think that's why I often write manga with a doppelganger theme where a character sees another one of themselves. In my own life, I will occasionally feel fear interacting with other people when I realize how scary the human heart is and I will often put those experiences into my work. Themes of obsession are also extremely prevalent in Ito's work. 
This is because Ito himself thinks the scariest part of the human psyche is obsession and madness. He says, quote, The odds are high that people with these traits will harm others. That is the scariest condition of the human mind. It's probably a lack of self-reliance. Those who haven't learned self-control, they're basically driven by a sense of dependency. Ito incorporates a lot of his own fears within his work as well. Some of these are the war, more specifically the fear of being drafted when he was younger, sharks, specifically after watching the movie Jaws, insects, being watched or stalked, and death or impending danger. When asked if he feels if there is a central emotional theme to his stories, Ito states, quote, One of the themes of Tomie is narcissism taken to an extreme. There are other works of mine that deal with that kind of self-love too. I think that sort of self-fixation is something that everyone has to some extent, and by exaggerating it, you get something readers can easily understand. Related to that are things like dependence and anxiety, of which anxiety can be at the core of a lot of other emotions. The root of fear is anxiety. I think and I would say that the majority of human actions, and even animal actions, are motivated by a desire to assuage anxiety. Following the release of Tomie, Ito released Uzumaki, a story famed for its use of spiral imagery. Uzumaki ran from 1998 to 1999 in Big Comic Spirits, a seinen magazine. These chapters were eventually compiled into three volumes, which would later be combined into a larger omnibus edition released in 2000. Uzumaki was nominated for an Eisner Award for Best U.S. Edition of Foreign Material and was made into a live-action film in Japan in 2000. An anime has been in production for many years and was expected to be released in 2020, but has continuously been delayed and is now projected to be released sometime in 2023. After the release of Uzumaki, Ito released another series in Big Comic Spirits from 2001 to 2002 titled Gyo Ugameku Bukimi, otherwise known as Gyo. The manga drew inspiration from Ito's anti-war sentiments that he had developed from many tragic stories his parents had told him. In an interview when asked about Gyo's themes of anti-war, Ito states, When I was a child, my parents, who were of the war generation, would tell me tragic and frightening war stories, so I naturally developed a strong awareness of war as a scary theme. What's more, as a boy, I was afraid I would be drafted as a soldier when I grew up. This fear of mine naturally developed into anti-war feelings. I think this is reflected in my work. Ito was one of the few manga writers that had addressed the subject of Japan's war crimes in World War II with Gyo. The death stench is implied to be the result of Imperial Japan's human experimentation. In France, Gyo was nominated at the 37th annual Angoulême International Comics Festival. It also received an anime adaptation that was met with mixed reception. Ito didn't stop his war expedition from there. Many were curious about why the grotesque fascinated him so much, and Ito states, He's not too sure of the reason, but thinks that maybe his curiosity is stronger than his fear. He found urban legends such as Kuchisaki Ona thrilling and fascinating rather than scary. Junji fully embraces the elements of horror and dives into the full extent. He says, I find it interesting that humans have such powers of imagination. Demons, for example, may have had a model inspiring them, but yokai, otherwise known as Japanese monsters, come in so many varieties and their forms can be very interesting. It is said that yokai are inspired by particular human characteristics which are then exaggerated. There's something fun in peeking into a world which exists outside of our everyday experience. Whenever Ito has a scary thought, he embraces it rather than pushing them away. In the Manben episode with Naoki Urasawa, Ito tells Urasawa that when he starts thinking of ideas, it becomes increasingly grotesque and that drawing off the wall stuff is when he has the most fun. He states, quote, when you are alone and you think of something really out there, you have to stay true to those original thoughts or you'll lose focus. Otherwise, it'll become hard to tell what's interesting about that original thought anymore. Junji Ito's manga have stuck out for their scary themes and off the wall ideas, and that is part of what makes them so intriguing to readers. His creation process may also be attributed to the draw of his horror stories as it is even unconventional by most mangaka standards. Ito draws his manga at a small desk under a bed in his house. He doesn't have any manga assistants, and the only people who help him are his neighbors that add some finishing touches to his work. He is considered a very slow drawer by most standards, and on the Manben episode, Urasawa even joked he is by far the slowest drawer they've ever had on. Jokes aside though, Urasawa states that it is probably why the elements in his stories are so terrifying. Ito takes the time to include every single detail possible in each frame and page. Some pages have taken Ito upwards of 8 plus hours to draw from rough sketch to finished product. Adding to his unconventional process, Junji even holds his pen differently than traditional artists. 
Most draw with their index finger on top of the pen, but he draws with his index finger on the side of the pen due to the fact that the traditional way always ends up causing him to hit his index finger with his thumb. He has jokingly stated that he would cut off that part of his index finger if he could. Ito uses a kneaded eraser for his convenience when drawing and used his dental knowledge to modify his pens to better fit his hands, as mentioned before. His creation process typically starts with an image that he deems worthy, and he then creates his stories off of that idea. With each story, Ito's goal is to strike a balance between the believable and unbelievable. He will use anything he can from the real world and often brainstorms on a memo pad. The most important component to Ito is an interesting image that he can create a plot around. He states that it is difficult to do it in the opposite way and has to start with visual elements first. He tries to add realism to his work to make the stories more believable as he is aware how absurd most of his premises are. He states, quote, If I don't draw the details in a realistic manner, then the story becomes ridiculous. When sketching, he will often improvise with what he is currently thinking at the moment to alter the images to his liking. He claims that he has a white space phobia as he always wants to fill in the white spaces on the page while drawing. His goal with every manga is for the reader to think, quote, I saw something I've never seen before. That's what I want people to think. Ito enjoys the free reign he has to draw pretty much whatever he wants within his work. He likes to create stories that are out of this world and where the protagonists find themselves in helpless situations. He does this with the goal that the reader will have no choice but to empathize with the characters who have no hope of escape no matter how much they panic or struggle. One way Ito accomplishes this is by drawing between the extremes of horror and beauty. He states that pretty girls are absolutely necessary in horror as they provide a direct contrast to the horror in the story. That is why he draws so many pretty girls within his stories. This quote described Junji Ito's drawing style perfectly. It said, all of the detailing in Ito's manga is incredibly intricate, which is another prominent feature of his art style. Alongside regular manga screen tones, like shading patterns, Ito makes heavy use of lines to demonstrate texture. All of the gory elements are shaded with a variety of lines to imply different squishy and drippy textures. It is the use of texture that makes much of Ito's horror so unsettling, something that would normally be unimaginably disgusting and impossible is rendered in visceral detail, such that it can almost be imagined, felt, and experienced. Ito's art style also makes use of strong contrast, both in the characters and their environments. The vivid usage of black and white helps create a sense of depth, which further adds to the eerie realism of his work. So to answer the question of why Junji Ito's manga is so unique and appealing, it all comes down to the aesthetic and narrative. With Ito's rise to prominence being known as a horror master, he lent his artistry to other mediums. He drew the cover of Muck's 2002 album, Omura Uta, and for their 2020 single, Shofu 2020. Ito also teamed up with Takashi Nagasaki and former diplomat Masaru Sato to create Yukoku no Rasputin based on Sato's personal experiences in Russia for Big Comic. At one point, film director Guillermo del Toro cited on his official Twitter account that Ito was originally a collaborator for the video game Silent Hill, of which del Toro and game designer Hideo Kojima were the main directors. However, a year after its announcement, the project was cancelled by Konami. Ito and Del Toro would later lend their likeness to Kojima's next project, Death Stranding. When looking at Ito's extensive library of creations, which includes over 40 stories, Ito's personal favorites are The Long Dream, The Hanging Balloons, and The Enigma of Amigara Fault. He believes that he is not good at writing long stories, so he states that he doesn't have any he's personally satisfied with. He goes on to say that short stories are easier to write well, so he's most happy with those that he has written. The Hanging Balloons was actually based off of a childhood dream he had, and The Long Dream was inspired by his sister mentioning the research of dreams being instantaneous. Ito cites his creepiest creation physiologically as glyceride, and says that he even felt creeped out while drawing it. Of course Ito's long career hasn't been without criticism especially when diving into the field of horror. Some of his creations have been criticized by people who believe his characters and stories project elements of Japanese society negatively. Ito's Hellstar Ramina represented the highly toxic pop idol culture. His works are mostly criticized for their treatment of the dead, as they involve themes such as vandalizing graves, burying a body before cremation, which can be viewed by some as a violation of religious rituals. Although there has been criticism, Ito continues to push boundaries until told not to. Naturally, as a horror artist, Ito has had to restrain some of his ideas as publishers would warn him that they went too far and has to be particularly careful about stories of mental illness or discrimination. He says, even if we have an idea for a story in those realms, we won't do it. 
Some of Ito's most notable works, aside from Uzumaki, Gyo, and Tomie, are Censor, Remina, No Longer Human, Dissolving Classroom, and many more. He has written over 40 stories, so there is something in his catalog for every horror enthusiast. Although Ito fully embraces his horror creations, he is known as a very mild-mannered, calm, and sweet man. In 2006, Ito married Ayako Ishiguru, who is a picture book artist. They currently have two children, and along with being a family man, Ito is a huge lover of cats. In his Manban episode with Urasawa, he even met up to be interviewed in a cat cafe, and he even has a video by Crunchyroll where he reacts to cats. Junji Ito's Cat Diary is an homage to his love for the animal, and it received critical acclaim from both fans and critics alike. If writing horror manga for 30 years wasn't enough, Ito loves to consume more horror content in his spare time. He states that Guillermo del Toro is the best horror creator at the moment as he is able to create unique worlds. He also stated that he was a big fan of the movie Hereditary by Ari Aster and enjoys the Conjuring series very much. The horror genre has grown over the years and Ito is a big fan of this change. He states as a child there wasn't much content and it was very limited, but now there's plenty of content to consume and create. When asked how he's changed over the years as a mangaka, he feels as though he hasn't changed much from his debut in 1986 as it feels so recent to him. He thinks the real challenge is coming up with new ideas as he states his well of ideas is starting to dry up and he has exhausted his supply, but he is determined to resist and fight back. Although he's starting to feel this way, Ito appreciates all of the love he receives for his work and enjoys interactions with fans on Twitter where he can hear directly from them. He also enjoys cosplays he's seen of his work and also appreciates all of the love his work receives from the West, as he was a big fan of Western movies growing up. When asked why he thinks millions of people continue to buy his work, Ito states there's a phrase, forbidden fruit is the sweetest. To protect oneself from something scary, by instinct, there's a psychology of wanting to investigate that something. I think that's part of the psychology of those who are drawn to the horror genre. However, horror is a pseudo-experience compared to something physically dangerous happening to you. So that accompanying sense of safety and security leads to enjoyment, entertainment, and joy, and people are drawn to that entertaining aspect of horror. Ito remains extremely critical of his work, stating that he wants to draw more because what he's drawn so far isn't enough for his standards. Perhaps the reason Junji Ito is revered as the greatest horror mangaka of all time is because of the attitude he brings to his own work. Naoki Urasawa summed up Junji Ito best by saying, quote, taking something and going as far as you can with it. That means there's love there, and the love for horror you have is no joke. Junji Ito will remain one of, if not the best horror mangaka for years to come. Whether he believes it or not, and the impact he has had on fans and the genre will forever be cemented in history. When asked what he thinks about being called one of the greatest, he jokingly says, Am I really? I don't think it's true and it doesn't seem real. I'll be sitting at my desk drawing like I always have.